You're listening to The Jam Price Show, all about movies. And today, my guest is writer, producer, director, Jonathan Kaiser. And we're going to be talking about his, oh, lovely, lovely film entitled Peace by Chocolate. Welcome to the show, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure, my pleasure. Oh, what a lovely film. What a lovely film this is. And it's a film that's needed. You know, all of us want good, uplifting films. Uh, we've been through a lot in the last couple of years, and it's always good to, to find a film that really can, has a, has a message, and, a, and it's a true story. It's based on a true story and um, can uplift us. So uh, I loved it. I thought it was just a wonderful film. So tell oh, thank us. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Tell us a little, tell our audience uh, what Peace by Chocolate is all about. So the film is about a family who had a very successful chocolate business in uh, Syria, in Damascus, and uh, it was destroyed in the Civil War, the one that's still going on now. Um, and they became refugees in a small town in Nova Scotia, uh, in Canada. And uh, I'm originally from Nova Scotia. So when I first heard about this story, um, after I heard about the you know community coming together to help them rebuild what they had lost in Syria, that was just immediately resonated as home to me, right? That is what the Nova Scotian Canadian spirit is, is welcoming people, even if they're not from where you are. It could be Damascus, Syria, or it could be Antigonish, Nova Scotia. You know, I think we have got to treat each other like neighbors, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. That's why it's so timely too. Um, you know, the, the the story is a true story. So tell us a little bit about how this story came to you, even though you're from Nova Scotia, how did you find out and discover the, about this family? So this happened about five years ago now. So I've been in uh, LA for a decade, uh, coming out here to, to go to USC and do the film <laughs> career as, as many of us do. And, you know, I was just really homesick and I, I always continue to look at what's happening in our local news. And we had a change in leadership in Canada. So our prime minister who was running for our election, Trudeau, uh, he had made a campaign promise. And he said, you know, by the end of the year, I'm going to bring 25,000 refugees, actually turned into 50,000 refugees from Syria if I'm elected. And uh, he was elected. That was October. And so you had basically two months to bring in all these people. Bureaucracy moves like you know, a snail's pace. Right. So how is that going to happen? And so there was a lot of news coverage at the time. There was a lot of interest to see, well, how is Canada going to do this and be a model for the world, right? Canada and Germany at the time really stepped up to bring people in from Syria during the civil war, um, again, which is still going on. So part of the news coverage was tracking different families to arrive. So Tarek and his family, who are the stories based on, they were the first refugees to come to Nova Scotia. And so the local uh, newspaper there, part of our CBC, which is our national news, they did a coverage story once a month for an entire year. And so, you know, I was very curious to see what was going to happen. And, you know, all these elements about, uh, you know, this need and want to become a doctor and the chocolate business. And there were just these great elements of family and community and, and chocolate, right? That uh, made it a, a perfect story to dramatize, right? Yes, exactly. So how did you, um, once you heard about it, how did you approach the Hadid family about telling their story? Well, that's, you know, always the tricky part, right? My background is in documentary. So immediately the idea of doing a documentary came to mind. I was like, all right, you know, but I really love documentaries that the ones where you're following as with the audience, what happens in real time, right? So the creator is there as things unfolded. And a lot of stuff had already happened by the time I was able to connect with the family. So we, we really, you know, approached this as, hey, we could do something that wouldn't just speak to your story, but it would speak to so many other people's stories. And, you know, we've had our, our, our theatrical launch in the United States. We just launched in over 50 locations in Canada two weeks ago. And the response has been universal. You know, so many people, so many immigrants, so many people who just have, you know, a, a differing relationship between their parents, right? Coming and saying, look, this is my story. Like, you know, I see myself in, in the Harads. And that, I mean, as a creator, you can't expect, you know, can't ask for anything more than that, right? Exactly, exactly. So were they they're open and receptive then to having their story told? 
A hundred percent. You know, I think they're a very forward looking family. They wanted to make sure that their story of acceptance, their story of peace, their story of hope is something that other people can learn from. And it was, you know, from the very beginning, we agreed, you know, they said to me, he said, if you're going to do this, you're going to have to make it an uplifting, positive story. I was like, no problem. You got the right guy. Like I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that. You know, I, I think so much of our media is really dark and like, some of it's good. It can really move you. It can propel action. It can make you think a different way. But uh, more often than not, for me, when I watch something that's really dark, I don't really want to think about it again. You know, I just kind of want to go find another form of escapism. So I really wanted to make something that still touched these really serious themes, but also left you with the sense of, well, you could do something too, right? You could sponsor somebody in your own community. You could help your neighbor if they need, you know, something. So... I agree. And, and, and you're right during, especially as I said earlier, um, over the last two years, I was, I've said before on this show, all I wanted to watch were happy movies, you know, it's like exactly, all the romantic right, yeah. comedies I could find and all of the other things that if it started off too dark, I was like, no, 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 I can't watch that. No. Yeah. I can't watch that right now. So, um, but this has so many elements to it. Again, um, the fact that it's a true story. I mean, that in itself, is really wonderful and that this community uh, got together and helped support let's talk, you know, support this family uh, when they came here and certainly uh, when they arrived in Canada from uh, their homeland. I'm sure that weather was a big shock to them. <laughs> A little different it's, a, it's a shock to Canadians too. Don't, don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> I used to live in Rochester, New York, and and I lived in Toronto, so I'm very familiar with that weather. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very familiar with it. So, what was the most difficult um, part of filming this? I mean, every film is a challenge. If it's not, I, I think you're doing something wrong. <laughs> you know, you know, if you're telling stories, you are being challenged. And that is a great thing because challenge, I think, always creates great opportunity. And and we had one here, you know, so much of you know, the media that is, you know, taking some culture that is not you know, in the mainstream, we often see a lot of appropriation. We see actors who are cast from a different, you know, culture portraying another one. And so we had an opportunity here really to do it right, which posed a great challenge, also a great opportunity. So uh, Hatem Ali, who plays the father, uh, who's actually, you know, was known as a director before uh, him, his return to acting in this film, he said to me, I said, I will do this as long as you cast everybody as Syrians who are Syrian with a Damascus accent. And my producer mind thinks, you know, is in Canada, is available in the next month and, you know, <laughs> fits the role and can act. So that was our challenge, was making sure we really had an authentic family. We had a family that if you are from the Arab world, if you speak Arabic, you know that this dialect is uh, Syrian and it's, you know, they're all from the same family. So that was a huge, huge challenge. Uh, and we really had to go beyond the typical casting networks you would have uh, in a film, beyond our casting director, and really go into the community and say, who is here that kind of fits this part? Luckily, Montreal, I think, has 100,000 Syrians. So we were able to really find a lot of people. And we ended up discovering, uh, you know, Ihem Amar, who plays our lead. And he's just this fantastic classical musician. I'm also a classical musician. So we we jived right away. We're like, okay, we can speak the same language. Um, so that was just really hard, but I'm very proud to say that everybody who is in the cast is their very first North American production who plays a, a Syrian role. And that was just an incredible experience to watch from behind the camera, right? And watch as the crew, you know, we had three languages on set, right? We had Arabic, Syrian, uh, sorry, Arabic, English, and um, French because the whole crew was Francophone. So not one of us could speak the same language. Right. So try making a movie like that. Google Translate, I think, should have paid me to, you know, advertise for this film because everyone had Google out. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> How did you do that? I mean, that's uh, be really difficult. I don't know. <laughs> I had a few problems, you know, when people didn't show up in the right spot in the right time. But overall, I think if you're if everyone knows why you're there, right, everyone believed in the story. If they were on a crew, 
They knew why we're here. We're telling a story that was really important, that was really timely, and that was something that was especially important to these new Canadians. Um, and everybody, we're all on the same page. So if you're on the same page, it's amazing how much language really doesn't matter in the end, right? Um, you know, obviously we have to do the technical things like translating the script from Arabic into English and English into Arabic, and, you know, get from point A from point B. But in the end, you know, when it's me working with my actors, you know, it's all in the eyes, right? That's where all acting really comes down to is in the eyes. Uh, and so as long as you know why you're there, you know, it worked out really well, so. And I read that you were, um, well, you, you filmed this in January of 2020, right before the pandemic really hit, you know, um, but you all were in the same house. So talk about that experience that you filmed this in, in one house, basically. Yeah, I would say about, you know, three quarters of our locations were in one area. So we rented this 17 room Victorian mansion right on the Lachine Canal in Quebec and, uh, you know, basically made it to our, our soundstage. And one, one thing when you're making movies is, you know, you don't want to move locations, right? Every time you move locations, you burn through money, right? Because you've got to move all the trucks and the wardrobe and all that stuff. So we really wanted to find a way, especially in the middle of the winter, not to subject people to going to a million locations. So we found this great house that we were able to repurpose almost as a soundstage. And we built sets in different rooms. And uh, But it also provided a really great cultural experience for everybody to get to know each other, right? We were all sharing meals together. We were all, there's no, you know, honey wagon or campers you know everybody was kind of picked a room and had their own spot and I think that contributed a lot to the vibe that comes on screen you know that it's really uh cast really worked well together and that's also how you design a production too yeah I, well it, yeah certainly is an interesting way of filming a movie when you're all thrown together in one place uh for sure I'm sure that added to the camaraderie from uh from everyone it whether did. they spoke yeah. the same language or not they learned uh, about each other in that experience, I would expect. Um, let's tell me a little, let's talk about Frank um, and, and who he is. And he was so instrumental, but uh, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about who he was, who he is actually. Sure. So the character Frank in the film is uh, he is one of the people who helped sponsor the family. So basically how it works in Canada is we have a private sponsorship program. So um, if you raise twenty five thousand dollars within your community or if you have an extra twenty five thousand dollars, you want to, you know, support a family with the government will match that. So he was part of a group that uh, that got twenty five thousand dollars together and the government matched it and they sponsored a family. And it's pretty amazing. You don't know who you're going to get. Right. You basically just get a name and, you know, their ages and you have to find clothes and a house and support them. But, um, you know, it was actually really his wife who was really involved in this uh, this sponsorship opportunity. And he kind of got word that, you know, the family, you know, the dad used to be a chocolatier and and just started to like figure out how, well, what can I do to like help him find a supply? So they started using ice cube trays, right? As a, as a way to mold chocolate. And, and that just snowballed. It was like, okay, we need more ice cube trays. Okay. Well, we need, you know, a tempering wheel we need. So he just was there and open and, and really felt the, the pain that the family had gone through and was willing to do whatever he could to kind of help bring a little bit of joy back into Isam, who's the chocolatier's life. And uh, he did that to the max, you know, building them a whole factory in the end, you know what I mean? Uh, and he stuck with them. He's still helping with them, but he stuck with them for years. And, and I think that's one of the great things about private sponsorship when we talk about displacement, which is something that we're going to continue to face for many years to come. It's just a fact of the world. People will move, wars will happen. It's going to, it's going to continue to be. So if you have private sponsorship, it's really great because you're really invested in making sure that the people you bring into your community succeed. And we saw that across Canada, where it's not just this story, but there are so many other stories where the sponsors really help the newcomers, you know, integrate into their new life, uh, more so than if the government just gives you a check and says, here, go survive, right? And because of their success, I mean, they even ended up, um, you know, uh, Udo uh, even spoke about this family. Tell the audience a little bit about that, because that's kind of exciting. 
Yeah, so you know the real story behind the film has got an immense amount of press and coverage, and that started in 2016 when uh, our prime minister, you know, made a UN address and, and mentioned them as kind of a success story of what happens when you when you open, you know, your country to refugees instead of closing your borders. So uh, that just like sparked so much interest in their chocolate and the business took off. They you know, expanded to over a thousand stores across Canada. Now they export across the world. Their chocolates being to space. Um, Nancy Pelosi was gifted, you know, a basket of them on the house floor, you know? So it's really just, it's this great symbol of what can happen, right? If you do it right. And just amazing. And the hard work and everything um, that, you know, they, they did to you know make this happen too. There in the storyline, there is um, sort of a antagonist. I'll get, I, I guess I'll say, I, was that a, a true character, a real person, the, the woman who had the competing uh, chocolate shop? You know, I think there there is always the person who is is not going to agree, right? In every community, and we we probably all know somebody like that, right? And I think there's probably a little bit of that person a little bit of that, you know, that prejudice, that judgment in all of us. We all have that, at, 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 even at a very basic level. And I think that's that's okay. It's okay to be unsure about a culture or somebody you don't know, but it's important to move past that, you know, quickly and realize that we are all human beings. We are all the same underneath our skin, right? We're all made the same. So, you know, that this person in the story is representative of many people. Right, who who have that question, who have that hesitation, um, and I think in the film you'll see the way her her story unfolds is one that is a good example of how we can how we can operate as human beings. So, exactly, what's the message you want the audience to get from this movie? It's a line right from the film. Um, Frank says it says, "Neighbors, newcomers, they're all the same to me," and and that is what I hope people take away is that. You know, so much of this fear of the other comes from just not knowing, right? Uh, just not knowing. All you have to do is meet somebody who's different than yourselves and you realize, hey, it's kind of like me, you know? Everyone has a want, a dream. They want to do something. They have a difference with their parents. They have a difference, you know, in, in their dreams. We all can relate to that, right? So I hope people see the story, they see themselves in it and they realize, hey, you know, next time I'm in a situation where I can help somebody out, I'm going to do that, you know? Yeah, it, you know, it's, I had something like that happen the other day when I was I was on a hiking, uh, in a, with a hiking group at the Sierra Club, and uh, there was somebody who was sort of complaining and not, not really a happy camper, and um, so we sort of put some people off, <laughs> and uh, so he, but uh, he was in front of me and we started talking, and he, you know, he told me his father was dying of cancer and that he had to move in two weeks. So as soon as I heard what was going on for him, then I had empathy for him and understood why he was, you know, not necessarily in step with everyone else at that mo moment in time. And, and when I ex expressed that to other people, they, they, they were happy, to, they, they were appreciative of the fact that um, they understood a little bit better where he's coming from. And I guess that's what, you know, this, this story is about too. It's just about, you never know what someone's going through. And, um, and so sometimes we make these snap quick judgments about someone without ever knowing what personally is going on for them. And so I, I felt blessed that he opened up to share with me and tell me what was going on for him in that moment in time. So it's sort of what you're exactly what this story is about too, because you never know until you walk in someone else's shoes what's happening for them. Exactly. And I mean, that's that's the power of cinema. That's the power of media. That's the power of storytelling, right? Is that we, as creators, we can bring people to these different cultures, these different places, these different stories that you'd never have the chance to. And, and hopefully that's enough for you to, you know, think twice. And, and you know, for me, I, I've just had the, you know, an immensely fulfilling personal experience getting to know Arab culture and Syrian culture and, you know, the most lovely people I've ever met in my life working on this project, you know, uh, and I, I just wish everybody could see that, you know, that, yeah. But it comes through, it comes through. In the I hope so. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does, Jonathan. It really, it, it, it does come through. And, 
Um, again, as I said earlier, this is a timely film because there's obviously so much going on in the world where we don't want to take in uh, refugees from other countries and um, we're trying to keep them out. And this film is inclusive and shows what can happen when we are inclusive and um, a welcoming and open um, to to meet to other cultures, we can learn so much, as you said, just said, we can learn so much from their cultures that we, you know, why do we think ours is the only one that's a good one, you know? Uh, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Doesn't necessarily always work. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the um, the actor who plays the father in this, and, and uh, you dedicated the film to him. So uh, tell our audience about him and, and uh, why you dedicated the film to him. Sure. So uh, Hatem Ali, who, who plays the one of the leading roles in the film, the chocolatier, the father in the family, um, he got his you know, career started as an actor, but became a really prolific Arab director. Uh, people have described him to me as the Steven Spielberg of the Middle East. And, uh, you know, you can see that in his work, which has been, you know, amazing that I got to learn about you know you know directing in a different language a different culture from a really great director in the arab world and so having him part of the project was just an amazing asset to have another director across from you behind the monitor all the time uh that you can just like double check things with you know um you know we have a little bit of praying you know i i have no clue how to pray <laughs> you know what I mean? this is not my expertise but of course you know it was great to be able to check okay, is this, is this right? Is this appropriate? And really bringing not just Hatem, but the whole Arab cast into the process and making sure that everything felt authentic. Um, so having him, you know, as the director and an actor was an amazing experience. Unfortunately, a, a year after we wrapped, he um, passed very suddenly of a heart attack. He was shooting um a big series in the Middle East in Cairo and, and just died in his hotel room and it was really a terrible, terrible loss for Arab cinema um, and especially for our whole team. So, you know, we dedicated the film to him because he brought so much joy to the film and joy to our lives. And, you know, you know, it's a lot of people you work with, you have a great time and, you know, you have a nice interaction with them and you move on and you go on to your next project. But he was somebody who had really become a friend and somebody who, you know, I kept in touch with. I'd seen him only a month beforehand and was discussing future projects and collaborations. And it's really, it's hard when you lose somebody too early, right? Who is such creative force. Yeah, he was, he was awfully young, um, very young. And he, he looked so familiar to me. When, and so I'm wondering what I've seen him in before. You know, he's just absolutely wonderful and uh, such a, impactful actor in this film. So I'm sure everybody felt his passing on a deep, deep level. Um, but it wouldn't, you know, but, so at least Americans will get to see him in this film. Yes, exactly, yeah. And, and, uh, and see his work, so for sure. Um, where can people find Peace by Chocolate? And, and also, why don't you tell people why the title, about the title too? Sure. I mean, the title of the film is the title of the real chocolate company. Um, and so we just figured that was a really appropriate title. And I think it kind of says the whole message, right? It's a piece by way of, you know, chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> what a better way to have a conversation about, uh, you know, refugees and newcomers than something we all can, most of us can get behind, which is, just, which is chocolate. I don't know. I, I've met a few people who don't like it or they're allergic, but I think most of us, we like chocolate. So yeah. it's a great equalizer. It's true. It's yeah. true. It, it is a great equalizer. Well, where can people see Peace by Chocolate? And it's P-E-A-C-E, -E, by the way, for those who are looking for it. Um, well, it'll be on uh, VOD soon, June 10th. That is the next time i still am select theaters in the u.s right now but uh yeah should be available on our on our link from our website peacebychocolatefilm.com and yeah i can't wait to be able to share it with everyone Hi. oh yeah and, and really everyone uh please go if you're just looking for something uplifting and something where there's you know you, you walk away with a wonderful message and you feel good after you watch this movie i uh, definitely speak out peace by chocolate and i wish you much success with the film, Jonathan. 
thank you very much. And thanks for having this lovely conversation. Oh, you're very welcome, Jonathan. My pleasure. My pleasure. If you have missed any of the Jam Price Show's All About Movies, you can go to my website, thejampriceshow.com, where all my shows are archived or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast on the iHeart Podcast Network, Spotify, Google, Apple, you name it, we are there. Also go to our YouTube channel and subscribe and like us while you're there and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Jam Price Show. Thank you all for listening.